Hi, welcome back. I'm Yan. In the previous lectures, I've introduced the RNA-seq data analysis and processing pipeline with TopHead and CuffLinks. One problem with TopHead is, and other popular RNA-seq aligners is that it takes a few hours to one or two days to finish one sample. This can be a huge impact on downstream analysis if you have many experimental conditions and replicates. In this lecture, I'll introduce STAR, an ultra-fast RNA-seq aligner. STAR is by far the fastest RNA sequence aligner. It was developed by Alexander Dobin and co-workers in 2012. It can detect canonical and non-canonical splice junctions and fusion transcripts with or without reference annotation. It can also map full-length RNA sequences. In their benchmark study, Dobin et al. compared the mapping speed of STAR and other popular RNA signalers, and they showed that STAR is 50 times faster than the others. My experience with STAR is that it depends on the reads. STAR is at least 20 times faster than top hat, meaning that an overnight run with top hat will be finished within an hour with STAR. STAR is written in C++ and currently it only runs on Linux or macOS. One of the favorite hobbies of bioinformaticians is to compare the performance of different softwares. Several individual studies have compared the performance of STAR and other popular RNA-seq aligners, including GSNAP, GEM, and TopHat, with experimental data and simulation data. These aligners are evaluated in terms of alignment yield, mismatches and basewise accuracy, splice junction detection, and mapping errors. STAR shows robust performance across different studies and is usually ranked among the best RNA-seq aligners. This means that STAR does not sacrifice accuracy or robustness uh, for their speed. However, it does take up, take up a lot of memory. The peak memory for STAR can go up to 30 gig. Therefore, I only recommend using STAR if you're running on a server or on a local desktop that has at least 32 gig um, and 4 to 8 CPU cores. Why is STAR so fast? The secret lies in STAR's two-step algorithm. The in-depth de description of the algorithm is beyond the scope of this lecture. You can find these details in their paper. Briefly, given a read sequence, STAR will perform a sequential search for the longest substring on this sequence that matches exactly one or more substrings of the reference genome. In the example on the right, this corresponds to MMP1, which is the longest substring that can be mapped to a donor exon. Next, STAR will repeat this search strategy with the rest of the read, MMP2, uh, show on the example and look for the acceptor splice site. This will dramatically reduce the computation of finding all possible uh, maximum exact matches and avoid any arbitrary splitting of the read sequences. The algorithm is implemented through uncompressed suffix arrays, which reduce the time complexity to logarithmic compared with other algorithms that are usually linear. In the second phase of the algorithm, STAR clusters the mapped, uh, the mapped reads to a selected set of anchor seeds and then stitch them together. This step allows for mismatches, deletions, insertions, and splice junctions. This also enables STAR to work with full-length uh, erroneous RNA seq reads generated by third-generation sequencers. This is the workflow of STAR. There are two steps involved in STAR. The first is to generate genome indexes. In this step, we need to find a reference genome for which the uh, species our RNA-seq experiments are done, download the raw sequence data and transcripts or gene annotation, if there's any, and convert it to genome index indexes that STAR will use for alignment. This step is not necessary if you already generated the genome indexes with STAR before, and your data is from the same species with no major updates of its genome. The second step is to map RNA sequences to the genome using the sequence data and the index genome we generated in the first step. In the next few slides, I'll walk you through the installation and these two steps. 
First, let's install STAR. This is a GitHub repository for the current release of STAR. We'll download the source code. The STAR user manual can be found in the following URL. It gives detailed instructions on the usage of STAR, its, its parameters, mapping strategy, and troubleshooting information. Once we download the source code, we need to first uncompress it in the desired directory. After we compress it, we can see subfolders of binaries, documents, source code, and other stuff. I found the pre-compiled executables are good enough to perform star runs, and it comes with the Linux and Mac versions. We just need to change the file permissions with the chmod command and copy the executables to our local binary folder. This will allow invoking star from any directories. Alternatively, if you prefer to compile star from source code, you can use the make command on Linux. It's a bit tricky with Mac OS. I suggest you to read the user manual for the details. Now we can start using star for alignment. The first step is to generate the genome index. Star has provided index genomes for human and mouse. However, I strongly recommend generating the genome index with the most up-to-date build. We need to figure out which reference genome and which annotation to use. For human and mouse, two major builds are provided by Ensemble and NCBI, and it's your decision to, uh, this, uh, it's your preference about which one to use. Note that if you decide to go with either one, the matching annotation has to be used. For example, you need to use the ensemble genome and ensemble annotation. For other species, you can look up UCSC Genome Browser or Specialized Database to find their genome. Uh, it is recommended to include major chromosomes including the mitochondrial sequence as well as unplaced and unlocalized scaffolds to achieve maximum mapping accuracy. As for annotation, the GenCode annotation is recommended for human and mouse. It was shown that GenCode annotation improves alignment yield and genes and splice junction detection in a recent QC paper shown on the right. Um, here is the command for generating genome indexes using STAR. The parameters are self-explanatory. The genome DIR specifies where STAR places the generated genome indexes. The last uh, parameter, SJDB overhang, specifies the length of the genomic sequence around annotated junction for construction of the splice junction database. It corresponds to the read length of your RNA-seq data, and a value of 100 will usually work for most cases. These are the snapshots of command line and output directory. As you can see, it only takes about 30 to 40 minutes to index the entire mouse genome. The Linux machine I use has 8 CPU cores and 32 gig memory. I want to point out that during this step, STAR will use as much as 30 gig memory, and the intermediate files are usually very large. So make sure you have enough hard drive space and, uh, and try not to do anything while STAR is running. Star output bunch of files that it will use for read mapping, and these files are about 25 to 30 gig size. Once we have the genome indexed, we can start a mapping step. This is the command for a simple alignment job for pair and reads. The genome DIR parameter specifies the path to the index genome we just generated in the previous step. The read files in direct star to look for the RNA-seq read. Uh, read files. Note that we need to include paths for read files for both mates. If you have single end reads, simply ignore the second part. STAR is happy to take many advanced options for customized mapping jobs, and you can find detailed information in the user menu. I listed a few that are often used in the later slide. Here is an example to specify the output file in the BAM format instead of the standard SAM format, and also to sort the line reads by their uh, chromosome coordinates. This is a snapshot of the output file star generated. The align out SAM file is a major file that contains the line reads in the standard SAM format. 
We will use this file for transcriptome assembly and quantification. There are three log files providing detailed information, mapping statistics, and job progress. The log out file is, used for, uh, is useful for troubleshooting, and the log final out is used for assessing the quality of the RNA sequences and the mapping results. The SJ out tab lists high confidence collapse splice junctions. Here is how these files look like, for example. You get an idea of the mapping speed, basic quality parameters such as mismatch rates, uh, uniquely mapped reads, and reads mapped to multiple loci. As for advanced options, the most frequently used ones are maximum number of multiple loci reported for read, uh, maximum mismatches allowed for a single read, minimum and maximum intron size, and gap size of pair of mates. Make sure that you know what you're doing when you play with these parameters. If you do not have RNA-seq experience, simply go with the default for a start. Um, instead of typing everything in the command line, you can also specify the parameters in the file and load the file with star using the parameters files option. Uh, another interesting parameter is to limit the RAM use and the I.O. buffer size. I haven't tested this parameter myself. I would like to know how it affects the overall performance if anyone has experience with it. So far, we've covered basic usage of STAR. If you can't get STAR running, or speed is not a limiting factor, here are some alternatives for read mapping. I've introduced the top hat in the previous lectures. Um, GS Snap and Map Splice are also very popular among the RNC community. Notice that the mapping results will be different using different aligners. However, the majority of the mappable reads should be consistent. As for downstream transcriptome assembly and quantification, you can choose from these softwares. At this moment, STAR was written sl uh, slightly towards RSAM. It also has option to generate couplings friendly output. Last bit of information. These are the URLs for reference genomes. Some really good review papers about RNA-seq and also some studies that evaluate the RNA-seq technology with respect to the systematic errors, data acquisition, processing, and comparison with the microarray data. These two websites are a good place to learn and discuss RNA-seq data analysis with other folks. Thanks for watching this lecture. Good luck with STAR and everything else.